Welcome to the demonstration on a multi-AZ deployment with vSphere with Tanzu. Multi-AZ deployments, or AZ short for availability zones, is a new feature that's available in vSphere with Tanzu version 8. Uh, we're also going to take a look at vSphere zones, which are an integral part to uh, multi-AZ deployments, as well as the new zonal storage policy. Okay, let's get started. So this is my vCenter server. Uh, if we have a look at hosts and clusters, you can actually see that it's already been split into three separate vSphere clusters. Each of them have their own uh, vSAN uh, data store or vSAN cluster associated uh, with each. So in essence, we do have three zones that we can work on. We mentioned in the introduction that we have a new feature called vSphere zones. So that's what I'm going to configure here. And in each of the different zones, I'm going to place one of the vSphere clusters, which, as I said, has its own vSAN cluster as well. So there we go. There's the third zone just getting added now. And now we have the three zones available. The networking is as before. It is a distributed switch that we're using in this case. And those port groups are available to all the hosts across all of the clusters in this environment. So the last thing I want to show you before we get started is the multi-AZ zonal policy we have for storage, which effectively means that we apply the same policy across each of the three zones when we provision something. Now, one final thing in workload management is the fact that I have to have a content library for my TKG images, and I do have a content library already in place. Uh, DRS and HA are also enabled, so we're now ready to get started. I mentioned the networking stack will be distributed switch. It will not be NSXT. And here we have a change from previous versions of vSphere with Tanzu, where you can flip between cluster deployments or zone deployments. So you can still do cluster deployments as before, but as I said, the purpose of this demonstration is to do a zone deployment. So I've selected all three zones. Now I select my storage policy, which is the zonal storage policy I created earlier. Uh, and now it's a matter of filling in the load balancer. Now I do have an NSX advanced load balancer already configured. So I'm just going to add in details about that NSX advanced load balancer so that I get uh, you know, VIPs for things like my APA servers and my load balancer services. So the details are just admin password and the certificate as well to trust. And now I'm taken to the management network. In this case, I'm going to do static. You could of course do DHCP deployments as well, but I'm going to provide a static range of IP addresses, which is five IP addresses from that starting IP address, as you see there. Subnet mask, gateway, DNS servers, and of course, NTP servers should all be added at this point as well. So that br then brings me to the uh, final network, which is the workload network. I am going to go with DHCP here, and I'm going to put all of my uh, workload nodes onto a port group that is on that particular distributed port group there, VM32. It's its, its own VLAN uh, away from the front end network and of course the management network. Final step then, add the content library that has my TKG images. And then there's some optional settings there towards the end about setting up the control plane size and a, DN and a fully qualified domain name as well. So now we have a new feature, which is uh, very useful. It's the ability to monitor the deployments, something we didn't have in vSphere with Tanzu version 7. So here you can see me stepping through. And if you notice that the conditions reached are being incremented, obviously I'm speeding this up for the purposes of the demonstration, but at least it gives you a good idea now as to how far the deployment is going without relying on logs and tasks like we're showing here. So again, the whole point here is that we should get the supervisor cluster deployed across each of the three zones. You can see that I have a namespace in each of them. And of course, with the NSX ALB, I get the AVI service engines being deployed out to provide load balancer services as well. So back in workload management, if I look at the supervisor, I'm now up and running. Um, I have a control plane address as well, and it means I can now go ahead and create some namespaces. So let's go ahead and create a namespace. And what you'll notice slightly different here as well is that I do have to select a supervisor now. Um, 
as before, if you're working off an individual cluster, you didn't have to do that. And last but not least, we have created the namespace. It's uh, entering its config status of ready in just a moment or running. And I can go ahead as before and add permissions. So for instance, I could give the administrator at vSphere.local ownership, although that uh, ownership and uh, can be delegated to other users as well, of course. Again, selecting a policy, multi-AZ policy, I can set limits as before, I can view TKG clusters as before, and then I can add VM classes for building out TKG clusters and VM service-based VMs as well. I can also add additional content libraries at this point. So now if I take another look at my inventory, if I open up these namespaces, I can see that I have a Cormac NS namespace created and I can see that I have a supervisor control plane VM in each of the three zones. And that completes the demonstration.